The pro-life movement is making a big mistake, and it's one that could cost them and the Republican Party the 2024 election. Instead of building upon the overturning of Roe v. Wade two years ago, the pro-life movement is on the verge of eradicating half a century of pro-life gains. They risk throwing it all away. Donald Trump, to his credit, is trying to stop that from happening. Earlier this week, Trump released a statement on his social media platform explaining why abortion should be a state's rights issue. Watch. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks, or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country. So almost immediately, pro-lifers ripped Trump's statement apart. It was not well received in the pro-life community. They accused him of not being pro-life enough. They accused Trump of tolerating abortion. For example, former Vice President Mike Pence said Trump was betraying conservatives. Other pro-lifers said Trump was throwing Christians under the bus. Now, some of the pro-life criticisms were correct. They're half right. It's true that Trump doesn't really care about abortion. He's not personally committed to ending it. We know that based on his statement, he's obviously okay with it on some levels. The pro-lifers are also right to point out that look, every life is sacred. It doesn't matter the circumstances surrounding a child's conception. And so if you agree with that as I do as a pro-life Catholic, and you agree with that sentiment, it also means that you believe the government has a role in protecting innocent life, including the life of unborn children. But that's really besides the point here. Trump is answering a political question, not an ideological one. And so in criticizing Trump's position, pro-lifers are demanding Trump to take a more absolute one. But what exactly were pro-lifers expecting Trump to come out and say? Did they want him to come out and call for a complete and total ban on abortions in this country? Do they honestly believe that Trump or any Republican could win a national election on that message? The truth is we have to deal in reality. And the reality is the pro-life movement has spent the last two years completely fumbling the messaging on abortion. At the national level, Republicans underperformed in what should have been the red wave 2022 midterms. Should have been a landslide, but it wasn't. Here's part of why. In each of the seven states, including solid Republican ones, where abortion was on the ballot, the pro-abortion position won every single time. Look, the truth is Americans simply want their abortions. They want abortions in some form or another. What they don't want is a national abortion ban, and the polls prove it. A recent poll from the Kaiser Family Foundation found just 17% of Americans would support a complete ban on abortions. According to YouGov, that number's even lower. It's less than 10%. So bottom line, if Trump runs on an abortion ban, he loses, plain and simple. And so my question for pro-lifers is, how many lives do you expect to save when you don't even have a seat at the governing table? Are you gonna save more or less lives? Because the answer to that question is actually zero. You will save zero lives if Democrats control Congress and the White House. And the fastest way to ensure that happens, the fastest way to ensure that there are more innocent lives lost to abortion every year, is to support a federal abortion ban. And for some reason, pro-lifers can't accept this. They're struggling to accept the reality that we live in. Many of them think it's more noble to lose standing for what is right than win, than actually win an election and obtain power by supporting or at least tolerating evil. Again, how do you want to save lives? How do you want to best protect lives? Can you do that when you're in power or can you do that when you're out of power? So something I've thought about recently with regards to abortion is the issue of slavery, mainly because pro-lifers are the ones who always compare the two issues. So I did some research on the man most credited with ending slavery, Abraham Lincoln. And what's interesting was before he was known as the American hero he is today, Lincoln said the following about social and political rights for African-Americans. He said this at one of the Lincoln-Douglas debates. I am not, nor ever have been, in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. That I am not, nor ever have been, in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermingling with white people. Abraham Lincoln said that. It's pretty shocking. This is the same guy, again, historically credited with ending slavery. And the point is, though Lincoln was personally opposed to slavery, he also opposed its abolition during his 1860 presidential campaign. 
He knew the reviews he could have in public and the reviews he could have in private. Lincoln never campaigned on emancipating slaves either. He only promised to oppose slavery's expansion. That doesn't make him a less moral person or a less righteous person. He just understood the political realities of the time. And at that time, abolitionists, abolitionists actually criticized Lincoln. They felt like they weren't sure if they could support him. They weren't sure if he was abolitionist enough. In the end, he did get enough of their support to win the White House, and the rest, as they say, is history. But had abolitionists actually opposed Lincoln on the ground that he wasn't abolitionist enough, that he wasn't as committed to the cause as they were, or had Lincoln campaigned on full abolition and full emancipation, would slavery have ended when it did? Likely not. And so the same is true here with abortion. The choice isn't between completely outlawing abortion or completely legalizing it. That's not the choice here. That's a false choice. But that's the choice that a lot of pro-lifers are presenting, or at least the one that they seem to think is at play here. So for the sake of argument, let's, let's continue to play out that logic. Say Republicans adopt the morally absolute position and go on to lose a 2024 election. Then what? Have these pro-lifers thought that through? Because a lot of people have, and here's what, what would happen, a little bit of what would happen in that scenario. You'd have Democrats take complete control of Congress. You'd have Democrats pass unlimited, anytime, anywhere abortion laws, even after birth infanticide. And you'd have Democrats fund more abortions with taxpayer dollars. And you'd see decades of conservative pro-life efforts to restrict abortion at the state level wiped out, wiped out. You'd see abortion skyrocket because it'd basically be legal in all cases in every single state in the country. Is that the future the pro-life movement wants? Is that what they fought 50 years for, to throw it all away? Because that's what their political purity is gonna yield. They're gonna throw it all away, and in the end, you're gonna have more dead, innocent, unborn children. The reality is most Americans believe that murdering an unborn child should be legal in some instances. It's a terrible thought to have to admit about our fellow countrymen. It's abhorrent, it's sad, and it's infuriating but it's a simple reality right now. No amount of absolutism, no amount of self-righteousness, moral politicking, none of it, none of it is going to change that. And so the pro-life movement has to seriously consider its options this November. There's Trump, who has proven to side with pro-lifers in his decision-making as president, even though, again, he's not so personally committed to defeating abortion. And then you have Biden, the Catholic in name only president who supports abortion on demand. He's directed his Justice Department to target, arrest, and in prison, peaceful pro-life protesters. Those are the two options here, it's pretty simple. And look, it's not to say Trump's statement on abortion was perfect, it obviously wasn't. Trump shouldn't have ceded language to the left by making reference to abortion rights. He shouldn't have called abortion an issue of the will of the people. But again, this is a strategy here, not a moral question, not a philosophical question. And so the strategy behind Trump's statement is correct. He's attempting to remove abortion from play in the upcoming election. Now, it's hard to know if it'll work. The left and the media are gonna fear monger with falsehoods about abortion as they do every four years, but it's worth trying. And for now, the state's rights position should be palatable to pro-lifers, provided that Trump doesn't actually get in the way or criticize state attempts to limit abortion, which unfortunately he's already doing in Arizona. So Trump should refrain from criticizing pro-life laws and efforts, and the pro-life movement should refrain from criticizing the state's rights argument. This is only further fracturing an already divided right. So instead, both sides should come together and focus on highlighting the left's extremism on this issue if they want to win in 2024.